Finance Minister, thanks so much for joining us. It's been uh, quite a, few, uh, a hectic few days here in Davos and at the heart of taking Africa specifically to the next level has been a focus on developing infrastructure, both the physical and uh, the financial, deeper economic integration as well. Just how tricky is it becoming achieving the latter, economic integration, given all that's playing out in South Africa specifically within the labor environment? No, I think that uh, the uh, economic integration program and particularly uh, the flagship one which we are emphasizing, SADAC Comes East African Community, is making progress. Uh, we did uh, agree on the uh, parameters for the negotiations last year, which essentially means that we will be negotiating a trade agreement between countries within the large uh, bloc that don't have uh, trade agreements among themselves. We're not going to be reopening the SADAC FTA, for example. Uh, so our focus will be on Egypt and other countries with whom we don't have any existing uh, trade agreements. But uh, I think, as you mentioned, uh, the approach which we've adopted there has been one which we said is development integration. Uh, it's not going to solve uh, the barriers to promoting uh, intra-regional trade on the African continent uh, if we just focus on, uh, on the trade arrangement. We have to complement that with an uh, accelerated uh, economic infrastructure program. And I think the North-South Corridor, our own uh, uh, 18 uh, strategic infrastructure projects, uh, the work of the, uh, the Presidential Infrastructure Coordination Commission, uh, we've all uh, showcased those. And I think there's uh, quite a lot of uh, uh, understanding that a considerable amount of work has been done and that uh, many of the right things are being done. Well, that's on the agenda and we're seeing steps be being made to actually achieve what's on the agenda. Just how tricky uh, is it, uh, or is it making things, the fact that we've got inequalities that persist and that's seeing social uprising? Well, I think that the uh, inequalities are things that we've got to address. Uh, they're very sharp in South Africa, but they're also uh, pretty sharp around the world. Uh, the question of uh, job-rich growth uh, is not just a, a question for South Africa, it's a challenge that's facing the entire globe. And I think it's uh, quite useful to come to a place like Davos and, and see that and then also listen to what other people are trying to do about it. Um, because uh, clearly uh, that has to be the focus, uh, uh, that and reducing inequalities have got to be the focus of our, of our policies to move forward domestically. With, with that being the focus, you've got to focus on job creation as well. And when it comes to labor, time and time again for business, uh, it's been reiterated that acting as a disincentive to investment, especially uh, in a context of labor rigidity, is uh, our labor laws. Do we need to be a little bit more flexible? Well, I think the first and most important challenge that we face right now is we've got to rebuild the credibility of the collective bargaining system. Uh, uh, workers have got rights. Workers are, are, are under our constitution, uh, part of the uh, collective bargaining process as well as the social dialogue process. Uh, I think the challenges that we face to be dealing with sectors where collective bargaining has uh, either been undermined uh, or hasn't been strong. So that's the first and immediate challenge, is to rebuild the, the credibility of, of the collective bargaining system. And then I think that uh, any changes which are made are going to have to be the product of uh, social dialogue. Um, I don't think there's a magic bullet uh, in terms of labor law. There are many, many other things. And in fact, the biggest challenge in the labor market is uh, trying to develop the skills mix uh, so that uh, we train and upskill people so that they do meet uh, the needs of the kind of uh, sectors which are going to grow in the country. That's the biggest challenge uh, that we face in South Africa in the labor uh, market area. While we try and address those challenges and clear those hurdles, Minister, we've got uh, the World Economic Forum competitiveness report ranking us number 100 and 13 in labor market efficiency. We're 104th when it comes to, um, uh, you know, a lack of flexibility in wage determination as well. How concerned does that make you? Because that's out of 144 countries. Well, I think that uh, there can be uh, more efficiencies in terms of the, the procedures and processes. Uh, but what we, what we can't uh, uh, embrace is an approach where we start uh, uh, challenging fundamental rights of, uh, of, of workers. Uh, sometimes people say that they want to see uh, less strikes and, and, uh, and more labor <coughs> flexibility. Sometimes they mean uh, unilateral uh, removal of uh, rights uh, in the labor relations arena. And I sometimes say, well, you can have one, uh, conceivably have one or the other, but you can't have both. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think that the, the challenge at the moment is to rebuild the credibility of the industrial relations framework. It's got to be a challenge as well. The need to balance uh, or find that balance for short-term solutions to actually address those immediate challenges while making the long-term commitments to achieve sustainable growth. Well, I think, for example, we, we indeed, I mean, we, we uh, for example, I think that, that through processes of social dialogue, uh, we are going to find uh, answers to 
promoting uh, youth unemployment. Uh, we'll find uh, programs that we can all agree on and advance with those programs. I think that's the kind of work that uh, we're engaged in at this point. Practically, what are we looking at being putting, uh, put on the table? Because we had a Kasatu not so long ago calling for specific measures to actually support uh, young people directly, but not happy with something like the huge, uh, youth wage uh, subsidy that was put on the table. Well, I think that, uh, for example, the discussions uh, within the framework of the, uh, of the new growth path uh, we're looking at things like uh, mentorship opportunities uh, for young people uh, so that uh, young people can get work experience, which is one of the biggest uh, barriers that they have in terms of finding jobs. Uh, and uh, I think that dialogue needs to uh, continue and in fact needs to conclude fairly quickly uh, so that we can come up with a, with a credible uh, approach to uh, promoting youth employment uh, that we can all agree on and there will be uh, things that all of us need to do, including government will have to finance uh, aspects of it. For now, how are you rating the risk that it's putting to industrialization of the South African economy? Well, I think that uh, there's um, uh, these uh, uh, events that we've had uh, are not, in fact, I think the, the, the overwhelming uh, issues that have been raised with us by international investors. I think uh, international investors are saying to us that they, they continue to recognize the Africa story, continue to recognize uh, South Africa's uh, pivotal role in Africa. Uh, they see there's greater policy certainty around uh, uh, the, the, the Congress of the, uh, of the ruling party. Uh, they see uh, greater policy certainty about uh, our adoption of the, uh, of the National Development Plan. Uh, and I think they've seen a degree of unity between uh, business and uh, a government uh, in this particular event itself. And I think all of those things uh, are leading many of the uh, foreign direct investors, people involved in, or who want to become involved in bricks and mortars investment in our country. Uh, I'm, I'm not seeing uh, any of them turn around to us and say they're not coming any longer.